Suge Knight started out as a bodyguard for NWA. Check out how he helped break them up. Talk to me. Hey, Dre, man. At that meeting, the disturbing thing, because Eric told me this, that Dre didn't say a word. He said, here it is a man I consider being my brother, and all he can do is have his head in a book, and this other dude, which six months ago was our security, is telling me how I'm doing. I don't like that. And he was highly disappointed. Well, you, if you want to know, first of all, hello everybody, big, big facts here, big facts entertainment. So, if you want to know about Sugar Knight, you got to go to the beginning. And the beginning, you got to start with Dick Griffey. Now, Dick Griffey was an American record produ producer and music promoter who founded Solar Records. Solar Records stands for Soul Train Records, which he partnered with Don Cornelius to start that. And before he did that, he was booking top artists for tours like James Brown, Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, you know, all those top artists in the 70s and early 80s. So he was the man. And he mentored Suge Knight. This is where Suge Knight learned the business from. This is who Suge Knight learned the business from. He learned it from Dick Griffey. You know what I'm saying? So now we get into Suge Knight was a bodyguard. Y'all all know he was a bodyguard. Bodyguard of Bobby Brown. Well, Suge Knight in his early days, was a bodyguard for NWA. Yes, amazing. Bodyguarded NWA, man. And he was bodyguarding NWA, NWA at a time when it was friction within the group. Ice Cube had left, Dre and Easy wasn't getting along, wasn't getting along, and it was because of money. And Dre was going back to Suge Knight, telling Suge Knight what was going on. So Suge Knight already knowing the music business. You know what I'm saying? At, like I said, he studied under Dick Griffey. Already knowing the music business. Got into Dre ear. And this is how it went. Dr. Dre was the producer behind hit after hit after hit on Ruthless Records, but he was being paid like a very low-level employee. The fact band members feel underpaid makes them vulnerable to outside forces. Their bodyguard, Suge Knight, thinks he can capitalize. Well-informed bodyguard <laughs> is your worst nightmare because he's close to the artist and he can make them think. And I think that's what Suge Knight did. I think Suge got a good whiff of how successful the music business could be. So Suge Knight decides to set up a record label and has his sights on the cornerstone of Easy's empire, Dr. Dre. To lure Dre in, Suge tells him he's getting a bad deal. When Suge came in, then it changed the whole dynamic. But that was those checks. So it wasn't that we weren't getting paid, we were. It just wasn't what we were supposed to be getting paid. Suge didn't have much experience at all in the music industry, but Dr. Dre was getting very tired of being screwed over, in his belief, by Jerry Heller and Easy e I think at the point where Suge Knight comes along and speaks to Dr. Dre, it's probably the ideal moment. You know, at that point, he will have experienced all those horrible feelings of bereavement for about a year of losing his brother. He will have felt he's getting very little in terms of reward. He finally has someone here who represents safety and comfort. You deserve more, you deserve better. I know you're exhausted. I will take this off of your plate. Easy is too busy with the ruthless empire to notice the threat. Hey. Dr. Dre is tempted by Shug's offer, but he's tied into his contract with Ruthless. March 1991. Shug Knight goes to Ruthless Records and helps himself to Dr. Dre's contract. See, and at this time, Dr. Dre is witnessing the big balls of Suge Knight 
And I think this is the time when Dre starts to be like, yeah, this dude, this dude got some cojones, man. He got some nerves of steel. And I think even the awe factor and fear factor starts setting in with Dre like, yeah, this dude is not to be messed with. Especially later on as he witnessed Suge doing a lot of things, witnessing a lot of things, being ruthless, being, you know, the ir the irony, right? Yeah, really being ruthless. He saw Suge Knight really being ruthless, and this put fear in Dre. And Dre would never hit Suge, you know, according to Bone saying, you know, you should have been punched that dude in the mouth. Dre was too fearful, bro. But continue. One. Suge Knight goes to Ruthless Records and helps himself to Dr. Dre's contract. What Suge saw, instead of saying to himself, I'm inspired, I'm going to go over here and do this too, he decided, I want this situation. Armed with this information, Suge and Dre go to confront Easy. Dre, man, this for real? Hey, yo. Talk to me. Hey, Dre, man. At that meeting, the disturbing thing, because Eric told me this, that Dre didn't say a word. He said, here it is a man I consider being my brother, and all he can do is have his head in a book. And this other dude, which six months ago was our security, is telling me how I'm doing. I don't like that. And he was highly disappointed in that. Hey, Dre, man, how you got this man running up in my house like he know me, man? Dre! Jerry Heller said that he tried to sweeten the deal for Dre in some other ways, get him other contracts to do one-off projects and things like that, but apparently it didn't work out. It's too little, too late. For Dre, Jerry Heller is the root cause of their problems, taking his friend Easy away from the rest of NWA. April 1991, three weeks before NWA splits. Dre confronts Easy. It's him or Jerry. In the end, Dr. Dre gave Easy an ultimatum. Either I go or Jerry Heller goes. A few days later, Easy makes his decision. He chooses his mentor, Jerry. April 23rd, 1991, the day of the breakup. Dre wants to leave NWA, but he is still under contract with Ruthless Records. Suge Knight decides to get Dre released from that contract by any means necessary. Okay, and then you all know the rest. Suge Knight comes up there with baseball bats for him and some mob Paru guys. You all heard it. And that, that right there is the beginning of Death Row Records, man. Awesome, bro. Yeah, and also, they went on... They, they recorded The Chronic in Solar Studios, too, by the way. That's it for me, man. Big, big facts. Peace.